Hey, so I wanted to share some of the resources that were involved in uh, writing The Last Supper on the Moon. Uh, of course, this is just on the space end because this book also covers in depth uh, the last things Jesus said before he died, the seven I am statements. This is just on the space side of things. So they come in a lot of different categories. Uh, you have the ones that were actually written by astronauts or people involved in mission control on some level. Uh, Carrying the Fire by Michael Collins. He was on the Apollo 11 crew. He is fabulous. Um, I love this book. He's the, the one of the Apollo 11 that you know the least about. You know Neil, you know Buzz, but Michael was a part of that. Uh, then you have Failure is Not an Option by Gene Krantz. He's the vest wearing guy who uh, was the flight director. Well, one of the flight directors, and he is the one who always wore the vest, which was something his wife always made him for every mission. He had a, a Star Spangled one he wore for his last mission. Just awesome. It made me appreciate and it allowed me to get into the mind of the, of the flight director and just what they they dealt with. This is amazing. Deke was the sort of head of the astronaut office, one of the original astronauts, but then because of a heart issue, he couldn't fly anymore. He was grounded. And so he became kind of the one who would roster on the astronauts for their different flights. And then he later on got to fly on a Saturn V with, that launched Skylab, which was the precursor to uh, the International Space Station. Then of course, Magnificent Desolation, written by uh, Buzz Aldrin. Ken uh, and Buzz wrote this together, and I got to talk to Ken quite a bit about the writing of this book. Magnificent Desolation was the two words that Buzz said on the moon when Neil said, Magnificent. Uh, Buzz said, quipped back, Magnificent Desolation, meaning it was beautiful, but it was also desolate. There was nothing there. Uh, Chris Hadfield, this was actually the first space book I ever read after I read The Right Stuff. He brought a guitar to space and sang David Bowie, you know, on the space station. This guy's hilarious and he, uh, he's just awesome. In a different category, there's books about the era, but by people who weren't directly involved in it. Um, my favorite probably being Rocket Men, which was a, a whole in-depth look just on Apollo 8, the most audacious of that whole era, it's been said, because that was the first time we ever left, you know, the Earth and actually went to the moon, which was a quarter million miles away. And uh, they call it the, the giant leap that made Neil's small step possible. Douglas Brinkley wrote a book called American Moonshot. This guy did also get to sit down, Douglas Brinkley, with Neil Armstrong and another author I love, Stephen Ambrose, and I listened to that conversation. Shoot for the Moon uh, would be probably my one recommendation to the person who's like, what's next? I would say, shoot for the moon. Mike Collins said, this is the best book on Apollo that I have read. I didn't notice that quote. Well, there you go. That's, and it's got three photo sections. Mine only has one, but I'm proud of that one. Is that okay? Look, I'm not, it's not a contest. All right, fine. Completely different category. Candy Weir's uh, Project Hail Mary, which of course is two books after The Martian. This one, fabulous though. His book also starts with graphs and charts and like, am I gonna need to know this? And and it made me feel good like, okay, I'm on the right track wanting to put, you know, the when you grab Last Supper and you first get to the schematics, you know, you're gonna have these, wait, I skipped right past them. Wait, where are they? They're in here, right? Is this like a fake copy? Oh, here they are. You have all the schematics and that was, I was thinking about doing these, but it just definitely made me realize how good it was because as you're reading this book, when you first come across, you're like, what the heck is this? But then later on, you read about the description of it. Like, oh, okay, I can go back and look at it. So never lifted the cover. Oopsie, There's nothing there. There's usually not. Three photo sections for James Donovan, but Andy Weir didn't get foiling on the hardback. Okay, right, so it's not a competition. It's not a contest. All right, fine. You have the more beautiful glossy. This is the category of just beautiful glossy. These would look great on a coffee table. Apollo Expeditions to the Moon. Uh, this one is a compilation of essays written by those like who were kind of involved on either the administration, administration aspect or the engineering aspect or mission control. So this was a great collection of essays that's also augmented by some great photos, which this, look, you can just bury me with this. I'm just gonna be holding it in the casket. The cool thing about this book is just everything 
I mean, these maps and everything's just so big and glossy. Oh gosh, I actually took this picture and put it in my book as well, but had to pay for it because it was not a rights-free photograph, but it was worth it. Uh, this is Von Braun in his office with the Saturn V uh, in comparison to the Mercury and all the other rockets. And it's like poking through the ceiling tile. They had to lift that out of the way. Anyhow, there's the Eagle. Look at that, it's stupid. NASA archives. Okay, so this is, look at this stuff. Louis Giglio sent this to me. This for my birthday one year. This is just gorgeous with a capital G. Look at this thing. This, oh my gosh. Oh, where else have I seen that photo? Maybe it's the uh, last page of Last Supper on the Moon. Yeah. Well, there's the footprint here. Can I get it? No. Ah, there it is. There it is. It's beautiful. Can you see it? Okay, listen. This thing is just stupendous, okay? For, look at this spacewalk. That's just ridiculous. But I also love like the chapter divisions, how they would portray the words. Islands in the sky. Then more abstract and unique. Uh, this was a Life magazine all about the era. And uh, I read this early on and just kind of saved it kind of during that year where I knew I was supposed to write this book. It was like, oh my gosh, how can I do it? Look at their space suits. That's not real. We didn't know what you needed around you. This was Mercury. This was, this is the original seven astronauts. They didn't know what they needed to wear, but that's what they had. The Lego. Why did I include this? You're wondering. Here's why. Because Legos are awesome and they also have had this beautiful collaboration with NASA. While I was writing the book, my kids and I built the Saturn V uh, Lego and we built the Eagle Lunar Lander Lego, which we technically built twice because this one also comes with uh, an eagle that goes in the third stage, which is where they kept it as they were flying to the moon. They actually include a ton of information in here. So even reading these things was like, well, that's helpful information. Look at that. Oh, hmm, interesting. I'm gonna learn about it, but that's the Spanish one. El Programa, Apollo. The original press release that they sent to all the members of the press in advance of the launch so that they could have this and all the information to be able to articulate correctly all these things. This is so good. It's like for release Sunday. Um, just that they gave him all this information to, to be launched no earlier than July 16th. And they gave them all this information so that they could be able to write and talk about it correctly and has all these diagrams. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, is Moonshot by Brian Floca. This is Lennox's personal favorite, and it also does have Lennox's handwriting all over it. Brian Floca is probably my favorite kid's author. Moonshot, I just got to say, is probably his piece de la resistance. I mean, Stirring, stunning, sublime, poetic. But this book's great, so if you're uh, a parent, I highly recommend reading this to your kids. It's got beautiful illustrations, and he actually like disseminates the information in, a, in an astoundingly clear way. First stage, second stage, third stage, drug parachutes, main parachutes. We have re-entry. And that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is some of the resources that helped me to write The Last Supper on the moon.